imagine your lovely wife joining a book club? But it involves no books, a secret society, and cheating. And it gets worse. Welcome to my nightmare. A loyal husband searches for the truth. Whispers guide him on a path that has more secrets than he ever imagined. This story has the royal AI guarantee that you can't make this stuff up. Lies, betrayal and brutal cheating. If any of these words stir something within you, then be sure to strap in for an extraordinary cheating revenge story. But don't worry, the ending will be worth it. Before we start, mail a potato to the like button's address. No box, no envelope. Just a stamp and an address. <laughs> Warning, these revenge stories might be upsetting to some audiences. All right, so I've got a pretty wild story to share. It involves me and my wife Jennifer, who I've been with for nine years. We were the kind of couple that people imagine, when they hear the words high school sweethearts. We met in high school, and started dating after a cheesy school dance that everyone was pretty much forced to go to. Everyone thought we were the perfect match, but we had different plans for the future. I wanted to hit the books, study law, and become an attorney. She on the other hand, dreamed of Hollywood and wanted to become an actress. Sure. I was supportive, but I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a bit nervous about how we'd make it work. See, I'd be knee-deep in law books, while Jennifer would be auditioning all over the country. I graduated a year before her because, funny enough, even though she was two years older than me, she was a grade below. I never got to the bottom of that mystery, every time I asked, she'd get defensive. Looking back, I reckon if I'd known the real reason, we might have called it quits right then and there. Trust me, you will understand later. After high school I shipped off to law school out of state, and we ventured into the land of long-distance relationships. Yeah, yeah, I can already hear you saying, bad idea. But I was determined to give it a shot. We'd chat every night, and I'd visit for holidays and special occasions. Sure, sometimes she couldn't chat for one reason or another, but I didn't read much into it. After she finished high school, she dropped a bomb, she wanted to study acting in Europe. Long distance in the same country was one thing, but an entire ocean between us? That had me worried. But she reassured me, promising endless phone calls and nightly chats. Time flew by, with her in Europe studying acting and me back here, nose buried in law textbooks. I met a lot of interesting people, some of whom happened to be women, but I kept things friendly. After all, I had law school exams, to ace and a bar exam to prepare for. Fast forward a few years. I graduated law school, passed the bar exam, and landed a job at a mid-sized law firm handling corporate contracts. Not exactly a thrill ride, but it paid the bills. Meanwhile, Jennifer was back in the States, auditioning left and right, but mostly collecting a string of failures. Finally, we tied the knot officially, although we'd been together for years by then. I slowly moved up the ranks at the law firm while she scored a few minor acting roles. We traded our tiny apartment for a house in Virginia. The price tag was hefty, but thanks to my stable job and good credit, we managed to get a mortgage. Then it happened. The CEO of my firm got caught up in an embezzling scandal. The firm went belly up and suddenly, my job evaporated. We'd racked up some debt and if we couldn't make the mortgage payments, we were on the fast track to getting kicked out of our new house. When I broke the news to my wife, we had a good cry together and started brainstorming ways to stay afloat. We thought about selling our stuff or her working a part-time gig flipping burgers. Unfortunately, these plans were like sticking a band-aid on a sinking ship, it wouldn't even be enough. With our mortgage deadline closing in, the pressure was on. Then, just a few days before we faced financial doom, my wife hit me with some exciting news, she'd landed a big TV contract. She was all hush-hush about the details, saying it was top secret and wouldn't even be made public. It seemed a bit fishy to me, but desperate times, desperate measures right? So time goes on. My wife was an actress with more and more experience and, come on, we've all heard how TV shows will go to great lengths to avoid spoilers and such. So I didn't go into it, besides, the paychecks she was raking in were enough to cover the mortgage. Because of this, life was back on track and I was on cloud nine. I almost wish I could have stayed blissfully, unaware, living that lie, but our marriage was already starting to smell like yesterday's fish. Half a year flew by. We were worry-free no more nightmares about losing our home. I even found a new job at a smaller law firm just three months later. They were more about public advocacy than corporate jobs, and although the pay was less, 
It felt good to help regular folks. Meanwhile, my wife's acting career seemed to be on a rocket ride to the moon. The paycheck grew year on year, but she played her cards close to her chest, not revealing much about the gig. Over time, I started to smell a rat. It didn't seem too much to ask, to want to know a bit about what she was doing, especially when it was raking in the dough for our mortgage. But I brushed it off, convincing myself I was being paranoid and decided to let it slide again. After all, I had bigger fish to fry with my new job and some personal development stuff. Speaking of personal development, I took up a new diet and pledged to hit the gym thrice a week. My wife Jennifer too, was putting in the effort. She'd dressed to the nines and put on makeup before heading out. Strangely, we hardly got intimate anymore, let alone go out on dates, so her looking like a million bucks was a bit baffling. I mean, TV does have high standards, but little did I know the real show she was putting on. Thinking back, you really can't make this up. The plot thickened when one day, an anonymous angel decided to share her secret with me. I walked into work to find a plain white envelope in my desk drawer. On it was my name with the words, read right away. Inside were pictures of Jennifer, in a setting that looked suspiciously like a strip club, engaged in activities that made my jaw drop. At first, I thought it had to be a mistake, some nasty prank I could laugh about in the future. The photos weren't exactly crystal clear and could be mistaken for someone else. I clung to the hope that it was all just a misunderstanding, or simply a joke. But nobody came to tell me it was, and my worries grew. I knew I had to dig deeper. With some cash stashed away from pro bono work I'd done before landing my current job, I decided to hire a private investigator. I didn't exactly have the time, or the stomach, to sneak around strip clubs or worse. Besides, if my suspicions were unfounded, I'd be putting my wife through unnecessary distress. The private investigator wasn't cheap, but he was thorough. He traced the origin of the photos and got down in the mud on his knees to reveal what was going down. The report landed on my desk a day later, along with high-resolution pictures that drove the point home. There it was in black and white, my wife, Jennifer, my sweetheart of nine years, was playing the lead role at a high-end swingers club. My heart sank and pressure built up in my throat, I could feel it pounding against my ribcage. The shock of what I had uncovered, hit me like a bucket of ice-cold water. Nine years of marriage, plans of having kids once the mortgage was off our backs, all left hanging in the balance. I was blindsided betrayed. My Jennifer, after all we've been through and survived together. I needed answers. So, that night I sat in the living room, waiting for her return. It took a few hours into the dark of night for her to walk through the door. I noticed her being surprised at finding me awake. Usually, I'd be sound asleep by the time she returned. Looking back, I should have seen it as a red flag. But hey, they don't call it hindsight for nothing. The nuclear evidence sat heavy in my pocket but I wanted to hear her out first. I asked her point blank, why were you working for a swingers club? She seemed to freeze. Babe, you must be confused. I don't work at any such place. What makes you say this? Where is this coming from? What makes you jump to such conclusions? I felt a rush of anger but managed to keep my cool. I insisted she come clean. Jennifer kept denying and giving me the look as if I'm crazy. That's when I brought out the pictures. Laying them out, one by one, I watched her face closely. Each glance she took seemed to drain color from her face, the guilt radiating from her like heat from a furnace. The slight doubt I might have had about the photos being hers vanished. But instead of more lies or a defensive outburst, she broke down sobbing. She claimed. It was all for the mortgage, to save our home. It was all for us. You must understand that I'm ashamed, look at what I become. I had to do this for us, but I couldn't tell you. I just had to keep it hidden. But my betrayal radar was beeping louder than ever. I pointed out to her that her fear of my disappointment didn't give her the right to stab me in the back. Her apology felt like a band-aid on a broken bone. She tried to reason that she never meant to hurt me, and didn't even want me to find out. What the hell, why? Is she serious? This excuse could never be enough for what she did. I then questioned her future plans. After all, I'd secured a new job a few months ago and she could have quit then. We could have handled the mortgage without her nighttime escapades. She seemed at a loss for words, and frankly, I didn't need to hear any more. Suddenly, 
everything began to click into place. The designer labels hanging on the coat racks, the expensive decor around our home, her thousand dollar clothes. How could I have been so blind? The realization hit me like a punch in the gut, Jennifer, was no longer the humble actress, she had become a highly paid sexy time symbol. One last question hung in the air. Did you enjoy it? The money, the fame, all of it. She remained silent, and the silence stretched miles for me. Finally, she asked. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to quit? At this point, I was fighting back tears. How could I trust her? We stood there in silence, like two statues in a crumbling monument of marriage, hoping for a miracle. My life felt like a cheesy joke. Then, she broke the silence, pleading for a second chance and vowing to quit the next day. I wish I could just stayed cold and kicked her out. I'm sorry to say this, but it's the truth. I should have said no. That would have been the right thing to do, and God knows, I came close. But I couldn't bring myself to utter the word divorce. The roots of who I am, who we are together and grew into, it felt like I couldn't. Instead, I found myself saying, okay. I gave her a second chance. And the next day, against her wishes, I accompanied her to the club to confirm she was really quitting. In front of me, my wife squared things off with her boss. My fists clenched at the sight of his self-satisfied smirk. After this emotional ordeal, we left together. I decided to take a week off from work and reconnect with my wife. We tried revisiting our days as love-struck teenagers, the sweet nothings, the silly pranks, the laughter. It felt nostalgic and for a moment, I truly believed we could salvage our relationship. As bizarre as it sounded, my wife's previous job at the swingers club had saved our house. A hard pill to swallow for me, the so-called breadwinner of the family. But she'd quit, right before my eyes, and we now had more time for each other. Another week rolled by and she began applying for new jobs. Around the same time, my law firm assigned me to handle a million dollar lawsuit, requiring me to travel to Indiana. The thought of going long distance again made me apprehensive. However, my wife's assurances gave me the courage to accept the job. We bid each other a passionate farewell at the airport, filled with promises, hugs and kisses. As I left, I felt a mix of excitement for my new role and anxiety over trusting Jennifer again. So here I was, trying to trust my wife to remain faithful while I was away or end the marriage. I chose trust. You might judge me for it. Either way, just when things were looking up, Murphy's Law struck again. The universe decided to test me further. I had been weak, I showed I wasn't ready to be strong, so my cheesy life had to shift in gear for me to learn. The first few weeks at the new job were promising. I was defending young teens on the brink of juvenile detention, rewarding work that I had been seeking. Despite the work, I made sure to ring up my wife every evening. However, after a few weeks, I noticed a shift. Sometimes she wouldn't be available, or wouldn't answer at all. She had her reasons, of course, the job hunt, errands to run, which I swallowed hook, line, and sinker. Then came a cryptic text message at work one day. It was from the anonymous angel, who had first alerted me to my Jennifer's secret life. The message brought back a wave of unease and my heart began pounding again. I quickly shot off a reply and set up a meeting at a local restaurant the following Tuesday. The week couldn't have gone slower, but Tuesday finally rolled around. I wrapped up work by 5 p.m. and drove to the restaurant. I got there a bit early, ordered the first thing I saw on the menu, and settled into my seat. Not that I was interested in the food. My attention was entirely on the mystery guest, who was about to turn my life upside down, again. Just after 6 p.m., an elegant woman walked through the restaurant doors. Instinctively, I knew she was the one I was expecting. As she approached my table, she introduced herself. My name's Nancy, and you're Jessica's husband, right? Yes, I responded, my curiosity peaked. How did you get those pictures? She let out a heavy sigh before answering. We worked at the same club, I quit last week. She paused, looking at me carefully before elaborating. I should have come forward sooner, but I feared losing my job. Now that I've left that dreadful place, I think it's time you heard the full story. A whirlwind of emotions gripped me, nervousness, excitement, uncertainty. What was I about to uncover about my wife? Go on, I said, leaning forward in anticipation. Nancy exhaled, then began. Jessica and I were co-workers. We shared the same shift, and often spent our breaks together. I had been there for three years before she showed up. 
I helped her settle in, unaware that she was hiding her marital status. Every time I asked her if this was the job she really wanted, she confidently replied, yes, and I believed her. At first, she would clock out promptly after her shift, heading straight home. But over time, I noticed changes. She began spending more time with the patrons and staff. Our club attracted many actors, and Jessica seemed to bond especially well with them. She also started showing up at work in increasingly lavish outfits. This wasn't unusual for the job, but Jessica was going all out. Nancy then shared how one night, Jessica invited her to a nightclub after work. They both ended up pretty drunk, though Nancy drank less as she had to work the next morning. Nancy, taking responsibility for Jessica's state, booked an Uber and decided to see her home. On our ride back, Jessica asked me why I worked at the club. I told her the truth, the need for money, and my failed attempt at landing a job elsewhere. When I asked her the same, she initially said it was to pay her mortgage, but then she admitted that she now worked there because she liked the luxury the job afforded her. Nancy then dropped a nuclear bombshell on me. Yes, even bigger than all mentioned before. Jessica, in her drunken state, blurted out that I sounded like her husband. I was horrified. I knew you must have been in the dark, so I took those secret photos to alert you. Using social media, I found your workplace, left the envelope in your cubicle, and hoped for the best. I was stunned, my mind replaying the night I had confronted my wife. You started for us. But you kept going, for you. I had told her. My gut instinct was right, and I regretted not trusting it. I regret acting like a weak simp, during this. Nancy, noticing my silence, waited for me to respond. I thanked her for her honesty and revealed my decision to file for divorce. With that, Nancy left the restaurant. But something still felt off. As I was preparing to file for divorce, I received a shocking letter. The hits keep on coming. Jessica had beaten me to it, accusing me of abuse, mistreatment, and even infidelity. The absurd accusations were backed by a photo of Nancy and me at the restaurant. Suddenly, it dawned on me, Jessica had been spying on me. Overwhelmed by rage and anxiety, I realized I had to stay composed. Despite the damning evidence and my wife's public slander on social media, I knew the accusations were baseless. My first step was to rehire the same private investigator. Armed with a trove of evidence against my deceitful wife, I was ready to fight back. Jessica may have made the first move against me, but I was determined to make her regret it. I compiled all the information from the private investigator and stored backups on my phone and computer. Next, I messaged Nancy, asking if she'd testify for me at the divorce hearing, as my wife had snapped a picture of our conversation and was accusing me of infidelity and worse. Nancy's reply came after a full day. Yes, just let me know when. I texted back, informing her that the hearing was set for next month. I spent the night organizing everything and preparing myself for the final end to my wife's deceitful games. Fast forward a month, the day of the divorce hearing finally arrived. I picked up Nancy and we drove to the courthouse in Virginia. I had her take a seat early in the courtroom. I wanted my wife to remain unaware of Nancy's presence until it was her turn to testify. After all, if my wife could blindside me with more lies, I was justified in surprising her with the truth. I met with my attorney too, who arrived 15 minutes after Nancy and I. My wife made her entrance 45 minutes later, accompanied by her extended family, a well-dressed man who I assumed was her attorney, and a young girl who bore a resemblance to my wife. A few minutes later, the judge entered, and the hearing began. The opening statement by my wife's attorney was shocking. He accused me of the very infidelity that I had accused my wife of. He claimed I forced her to quit her job, refused to help her find new employment, and made false accusations against her when I found a better paying job. To top it all off, he argued that I wished to deny her alimony, leaving her penniless. The worst allegation came next, I couldn't have made this stuff up in my wildest dreams. Apparently, I was refusing to provide any support for our supposed daughter, who needed financial aid. He requested the court to compel me to make alimony payments to my wife following the divorce. I was stunned. My wife had never mentioned having a daughter, and neither had her family. We had never planned on having children yet let alone an 11 or 12 year old girl. 
As I tried to make sense of the revelations, I remembered a puzzling reaction my wife had had to a question in high school. It dawned on me then, she must have dropped out to hide a pregnancy. All these years, I believed we had no secrets, yet she had kept this, enormous one hidden in plain sight. I had no time to dwell on this startling revelation, however. The divorce hearing was well underway. My God! This hit me hard, but I couldn't have a soft spot anymore and be weak. I had to fight for my life right now. So then it was our turn, and the fight was on. My attorney cleared his throat before addressing the judge. Your Honor, they've misrepresented my client at every turn. Not a single instance of infidelity on his part can be substantiated. The photographs and questions presented are insufficient to prove such a claim. Moreover, we have solid evidence that it's his spouse who's been involved in rampant infidelity. Please refer to exhibits A, B, and C, which show the defense's client openly confessing to deceitful behavior for financial gain. These actions don't speak to the character of a trustworthy person, especially one who misrepresents our actions and those of my client. Furthermore, we contest the claim that the defense requires financial support. As Exhibit D shows, she is currently employed and fully capable of supporting herself. Any contrary assertions are misleading. If her counsel disagrees, we challenge them to provide bank records to prove their case. My attorney paused before concluding. My client has been deceived and misled, and now he wishes to disentangle himself from this web of lies without financial loss. We believe the court will find this to be a reasonable request. The judge took a moment to deliberate, then proceeded to review the evidence. The last exhibit, Exhibit D, had been meticulously collected by my private investigator. It was undeniable proof that my wife was still employed, and as the evidence was shown to the courtroom, her face paled. The photographs clearly displayed her working at a swingers club just a week ago and flaunting expensive attire and jewelry. Her lawyer seemed perplexed, while her family appeared shocked. I couldn't help but feel a sense of triumph as her dirty web of deceit unraveled in front of everyone. During this whole ordeal, I was alone in receiving the hits, and the hits just kept on coming. Sure, I share the blame when I gave her another chance and chose the weak route, but now I had no remorse and it was my turn to deal the hits. Enter the last nuclear hit, when my lawyer called Nancy to the witness stand. As Nancy rose, my wife turned an even paler shade of white, and I couldn't suppress my smile. Under my lawyer's questioning, Nancy confirmed her identity, acknowledged her past employment at the same club as Jennifer, my precious wife, and shared her perceptions about her. Nancy disclosed how Jennifer flaunted her wealth, and confessed about lying to her husband while in a drunken state. When my lawyer asked Nancy about a photograph featuring her and me, she explained that she had approached me to inform about Jennifer's infidelity, and had nothing to fear as she had quit her job at the club. She clarified that the photograph was not evidence of any infidelity on my part, and to further cement this, she produced an audio recording of our conversation. As the recording played, my wife's face fell further. She must have assumed I had nothing recorded, and if I hadn't, perhaps I would have lost to her deceit. However, the truth was laid bare for all to see, and there was nothing left to shield her. After the recording was submitted to evidence, the judge turned to my wife and her attorney with a stern expression. Both sides have presented their cases and arguments regarding alimony. If there are any additional statements you would like to include, please do so before I render my decision. I expected an outburst from my wife, but she remained silent, her face buried in her hands. Her family and even her attorney looked at her with disappointment and disgust. The courtroom fell into silence before the judge spoke again. In the case of alimony provision, I determine that the plaintiff lacks grounds to demand alimony. The petition for divorce is granted. And just like that, I was divorced and a free man. I walked out of that courtroom, smiling like a kid who'd just swiped the last candy from the store. Never spoke or saw Jennifer again. The moment was bittersweet, no, who am I kidding, it was just sweet. The only bitter part was the realization that I'd spent so much time on a person like her. And as for my private investigator, well, he saved me. He dug me out of an avalanche of lies and deceit saving more than just my wallet. If there was a Nobel Prize for saving gullible husbands, he's the winner. This one is for him. Thank you for listening. Brother, 
Your story hit close to home, and I'm so sorry you had to go through something like this. Betrayal is a bitter pill to swallow, but your strength and determination are truly admirable. Always remember, it's not your fault. People make their choices, and sometimes, those choices hurt the ones they're supposed to love the most. However, you've shown that it's possible to rise above the pain and deceit, even when the hits keep on coming. You've shown that it's okay to fight for your dignity. Now for anyone who's going through something similar, here's my two cents. Trust in yourself. It's going to be tough, there's no doubt about that. But you've got the strength to face the storm and come out stronger. Surround yourself with good people, those who truly care about you. Because as you can see from this story, there are bad people out there. Don't be afraid to lean on them when the going gets tough. And above all, remember, it's okay to put yourself first. Stay strong, man. Better days are on their way. You've got this. Oh, my heart aches hearing this story. It's a strong reminder that love, as beautiful and uplifting as it can be, also holds the power to break us into a million tiny pieces. The feeling of betrayal can be so brutal, so gut-wrenching that it shakes the very core of our being. I can't believe what she did, you could write a book on this experience alone. Shame you didn't tell us more about her daughter, would love to know if you had any contact with her or what the story is behind that part. Also, wouldn't you love to talk to your ex-wife one more time? Or know how she's doing right now? What she did, lying like that in court, should have legal consequences in my opinion. You embarked on a journey that none of us should ever have to go through. Your actions were those of a man deeply wronged, yet you did not crumble. Instead, you fought for the truth. Nancy, on the other hand, was your hidden angel. She stepped up and did what was right, regardless of the consequences. Her bravery was amazing, serving as a beacon of hope and a reminder that there are still people out there who value honesty and integrity. Thank you for sharing your story with us. That wraps it up for this Royal AI episode. Don't forget to mail a potato to the like buttons address. Remember that stories like these actually happened. It might be easy for us to say we would have done it differently, but when it hits you in your life, you could deal with it in an unexpected way. What do you think? Let us know. It always brightens my day to read your comments. Take care. See you in the next one.